Righto Clampers, welcome back for another episode of Free and Budget Campsites in New South Wales. For new new viewers, my name's Peter and I'm chasing around campsites, caravan parks, anywhere I can leave my bus for a budget. So hopefully I can save that money and pass that information on to you. Right, at the end of the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, turn your notifications on, and hit that subscribe button. Right, we're around 40 to 50 kilometers south of Tamworth at a place called Werris Creek. What a great little town this place is. It packs a bit of a punch with you railway buffs, so stay tuned at the end of the show. I'm going to show you old railway station and there's things about the town that I think that's pretty cool. We're at a place called David Taylor's Oval, and it's a 72 hour free stay and it's a pretty cool campsite offers toilets woohoo it offers things to do for your kids around here uh, basketball courts it's got cricket nets it's got a big oval that you can run around play tennis whatever tip now it's also offers ready for this free showers and there's power in the showers so to plug your phone in so if you're a bit low on power Plug your phone in, charge it here. Now, it's only a couple of kilometres away from the town, which we're going to go there today, like I said before. So stay tuned, that. that's a must. Um, but the campsite's pretty cool. You have to come off the New England Highway to actually get this place. And when you travel up further, you get back on the New England Highway towards Tamworth. Let's get in there and see what it's got to offer. Let's get in there. There is a sign out the front that says, please donate. Now, I've had a look around here for a donation box, and I can't seem to find one. There is a blue box up near the toilets, but there's a hole through it. So I'm assuming or guessing the box goes through, a pin goes through and locks it. Now, I did see a five cent piece right in the bottom of that. Whether that's the donation box, I don't know. But there is no donation box here at this time. Keep an eye out. If there is, drop a couple of coins in it. No worries. Like I say to most of all my videos, if you come here, Clampers, come have a look at some of these boards they put up there. It gives you some information about things to do around this area, such as Bob Shed. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, Bob Shed is a must. Now, I'll leave the link up here for the, act the campsite I actually did where Bob Shed is. So it's up there. Have a look. It is a bit of a must. I'll give you a bit of a demo through this show what Bob Shed's like. Not too much, but just a bit of a teaser for you. It's a must. He really likes Peter Brock, I think. You'll find out when you'll see the video anyway. But look, when you come up here, have a look around. There's quite a few things to do around here. Alrighty-o, just a bit of a heads up, while you're at this campsite, you will definitely hear trains. Now, I don't know how long they run for, but you are right next to the Sydney-Brisbane main line, so you will hear a lot of... <laughs> don't know, I'll leave all the information down below if I hear them tonight or what time they stop by, but during the day since I've been here, I've noticed around four gone past, so four... <laughs> yeah, that is what it is. Guess what? Still free. It's BBQ time. Cooking facilities. Look, I'm pretty impressed. Look, I'm not impressed with the color of them. They're a bit brown. These barbecues are free. There's two of them. They are undercover. They have got picnic areas. There's no light. So at night time, eh -eh. torch light, candle light. How romantic. But they're free. Best thing about it. Look, you'll have to get one of those silicon sheets that you buy from one of those things. If you get one of those things and you just put it over your barbie, you can cook on it, take it off, clean it out, and you can reuse it. They are a bonus. They're only like $12 or $13 a pack of three. Uh, you get them from Bunnings, any sort of camp shop will do them, BCF, you name it, they've got them. Now, you're best off having one of those if you're traveling around because it looks like trying to clean that's gonna be a pain in the ass. 
Righto, is that the time? It's time to take a poo. Righto, glampers. They've got some sets of toilets here. There's actually four sets of toilet and one's not actually being used at the moment. Now, I had a look at them. Look, the good thing about it, they do have hot showers here, which is a bonus, which is a plus on this side. It's got a power point in there, so if your phone's running low, you can actually plug it in while you're having a shower, so Bob's your uncle. Um, it's got no hand soap. Mm -mm. It's got no toilet paper, and it's got no hand wash itself. So look, out of five, and they're dirty. Out of five, two and a half, look, I'd love to give them more. They are not too bad, but they're, like I said, they're missing everything. What's happening? But they've got showers at least. So when you go to take a dump, make sure you bring your own poo paper. <laughs> dump site to the caravan park where I'm staying at the moment is in Rosa Lee Park and it's just off Lotta Street. Oh, look I don't know if I sa said that right but the information's on the screen and the location of this dump site is in the description down below if you can't find it. If not it shows you on wiki camps. It's a pretty good site. I'm looking at it right now. Plenty of room to get your RV in here for black water tanks or cassettes. It's up to you guys. Um, it has got water out here. There's no sign that says non-potable, but nevertheless, when it comes to dump sites, be very careful with the water here. It's just mainly washing out your cassette and anything you need to wash out on your van itself. There's toilets here. There's actually a bin right here. There's a playground if you want to get your kids here. It's a day, it's like a day use area. There's a couple of service stations around in this town, not many. If you need to do a dump, come out here. Hey clampers and all you train buffs, if you're staying at the actual campsite which is just down the road which is David Taylor's Oval, which is a great little campsite, there's a bit of a history behind him, he actually started this place, he owned everything back in 1878, he owned the post office and he owned the grocers and he sort of started this town off, now the following year after that this train station was built and it is a magnificent train station. It is written it was the best train station in New South Wales. Ah, oh, that's up to everyone else to decide about that one. Now they still use these trains today. From here back to Sydney's 411 kilometers on the track. So look, if you need to take a ticket from here, they don't have any ticket machines here or if not you purchase it online. Right now the opening hours of this museum is only Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Believe it or not they said to say they've run out of volunteers that have it open during Monday and Tuesday. Now it's normally open from 10 a.m. to actually 3 p.m. and it's like I said it's only a five dollar donation. Look they are shut certain times of the year which is Christmas Day and Good Friday but otherwise bring a group of people here you will get a kick out of it. Right, it's not a huge museum, but it's enough to keep yourself occupied and remember about some of the stuff that we used to have. Look, the old red rattler seats. I don't know if any of you guys remember that sort of stuff. Leave your comments down below if you remember that stuff. But there's a little bit to look at, and if you're into the railways, it's a definitely must. Just to walk around the whole town, and it's all about the railways. When you come up here, there's an upstairs area itself. What you do is you just walk around a couple of halls. Now, go downstairs and ask the lovely lady who takes your money. There is a room that you can actually go in, and they've got a whole train station and a whole circuit in there. And, man, seriously, it is fantastic, as you can see, mate. They've got so many trains in there. They all make noises. They flash up. Mate, they've put some work into it. Now, the guy who actually originally built it, he's passed away now, but they've actually kept it going and kept on building in here. Look, I'll just show you one of these rooms, for instance. This is the old, um, old telephones. For all you younger people down there, this is the stuff that we used to use back in the old days. Lady used to sit there with the headpiece on and go, um, hello Mr. Jones, can I help you? And Mr. Jones used to go, oh yes please, I'd like to be talking to Mr. Smith please. And they always used to go with the headpiece on, okay Mr. Jones, passing you through now, okay. And then they plugged you in. Right, uh, these are the actual houses that used to be around. And when the phone used to call, it used to pop open like that. Now she used to find out 
whoever needed to do it, switch a couple of these switches, come in and then take one of these things and plug it into the right core. Now it's all done by computers and our phones are run by computers all around the place and there's no need for someone like this. Like that. Gertrude from the local shop, sit down there and go hello. But that's how an old phone system used to work back in the days when I was a boy. <laughs>